So guys, today I'm excited to introduce um, for you a wonderful ethical system that's been designed for and by CNTM Christian students. Now you might say, Mr. Cook, could there be anything better than what we talked about last time, Christian hedonism? And then I, I introduced to you Christian hedonism and you said, nah, that wasn't that good. I'm like, wait, worshiping God is what my life is all about? That sounds like fun, not. Was that offensive, Hannah? I was writing something down, so I wasn't really paying attention. Dang it. I was supposed to offend you, and, I, and you were not paying attention. Uh, yeah, so um, we looked at Christian hedonism. John Piper, the great Calvinist Baptist minister, suggested to us that, <clears throat> well, we have to just w desire God more, and we'll be happier. The more you desire God, the happier you will be. And um, frankly, whenever I've introduced what's known as Christian hedonism, most of my students uh, just kind of shrug, like, eh, not, not buying that. However, I have good news for you because I know some of you deep down, you want to be egoists, but you also don't want to let go of Jesus. Because let's think about this for a minute, right? If I'm an egoist and I'm doing everything for myself, then it would make sense for me to make sure that I don't wind up in hell. You know what I'm saying? Right? I don't want to be roasting down there forever. So I gotta gotta find a way to get to heaven. And so being a good selfish person, I gotta find a way to live my best life now. Thank you, Joel Osteen. My best life now and my best life in the future, which is not in hell, but it's in heaven. So it's the best of all worlds. How many of you are kind of excited to learn about what I've called Santium Christian egoism? Yeah? How can I be a Christian and still be a dirty, selfish person? <laughs> I've got the answer for you today. I'm pretty excited to share it with you. So I'll be sharing my screen with you. You may want to take a little bit of notes, um, especially when we get to utilitarianism. First, though, we're talking about um, Christian egoism, or, or uh, maybe it's more appropriately, Santium Christian egoism, designed by former Santium Christian students that liked egoism but wanted to still be a Christian. Here we go. Are you referencing specifically Shuey? No, no, I'm not uh, re referencing Shuey. This was before Schumacher. Schumacher's own version of ethics was a nonsensical, uh, complete disaster. Um, his, his past paper was uh, not particularly coherent, um, but he tried, kind of. Okay, let's look at uh, what I call Santiam Christian egoism. This is my terms, these are my terms, these are not like, if you, if you type this in, Senium Christian Egoism, you're not going to have anything come up online. I have had some students try to write on this specifically, but that was before I started teaching on it. I realized it's something that a lot of students kind of liked. And so I, I finally realized I have to directly address it. Okay. I exist for myself, and I'm a Christian for the reward. After all, what happens to people who aren't Christians? They burn. People who are Christians, they go to heaven. And what's heaven like? It's great. You get mansions and you get streets of gold. Do I have an amen there? Mansions and streets of gold. You Laugh right here is not real great, but laugh up there is going to be really great, if you know what I mean. It's going to be mansions, streets of gold. There's going to be all sorts of... Uh, well, mansions and streets of gold, we're not going to say anything more than that. The idea of worshiping God for, for hereafter is really, really not that much fun. Do I have an amen? Anyone honest? How many of you would like to be stuck in a church service for eternity? Anybody? Especially an Orthodox church service. Yeah, well, that's what they say is going to happen. You're going to get stuck in an Orthodox church service for eternity. And by the way, everyone goes for the Orthodox. Some people say it's heaven. Some people say it's hell. But everyone goes. But everyone goes. So uh, anyway, um, continuing on down this line of reasoning. Uh, so in this life, I will seek after personal pleasure. What does this look like? Um, possessions that make me happy. Relationships that make me happy. The stuff that makes me happy. All the stuff in this life um, that, that will give me the best life now. In fact, we even have Christian speakers and teachers that talk about this. Joel Osteen, for instance, has a book called Your Best Life Now. 
Oh, and also eternal life. Uh, you have to either choose now, of course, the method by which you get eternal life. Who knows exactly what that looks like? Turns out Christians disagree. Some people say you have to be baptized and you're good. Other people say you have to have faith and you're good. Other people say you have to uh, choose God or ask Jesus into your heart and you're good. Other people just kind of use the nebulous phrase that you've all heard many times. Personal relationship. You guys heard that phrase before? You just need a personal relationship with Jesus. How many of you have heard that? And that has become the new means of grace. You get into heaven by having a personal relationship with Jesus. Okay, so however that happens, you get that. You have to ask for forgiveness and serve him to whatever extent is necessary in order for you to get to heaven. How many of you like this? You can raise your hand. I'm not going to think bad of you. We all kind of like this, I think, on some level. I'm just asking sort of on, on a gut level, how many of you like this? I get to be selfish. I get to do what I want in this world, and I get to go to heaven too. It's a win, 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 win for all eternity. Come on, let me see your hands. How many of you like this win-win situation here? Nobody Yet I don't think like it, it works that way. <laughs> well, that's the question is, is it this way? Um, but, but first, how many of you kind of like it to be this way? Come on, let me see your hands. Everybody, you can do it. So Shiloh's saying yes. I saw Levi said yes before. Keelan, I know you want to vote and say yes. Okay, Chris is doing this. But I, I, said, I said no one should be voting no. Like everyone should have their hands up. Like it doesn't, this, on the basis of thinking about it logically. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to do, do this? Next question though is, can we do this? Does this make sense? Is this a coherent system? Um, and I've had many students try to write papers arguing this. When I say many, I don't mean like hundreds. I mean more like probably 10 over the course of uh, my teaching of ethics class. Probably 10 kids have embraced a egoism trying to mix it with Jesus. Let's see if Jesus plus egoism actually works. So let's look at the critique here really quickly. And before we look at the the actual reasoning of the critique, let's just pull up a few Bible verses. Um, and of course, Christianity uh, typically takes the Bible as foundational to the Christian religion. Let's see what the Bible says about the motive of putting oneself first. Okay, the Bible tells us that we are to love God and that we are to love others. What does love mean? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient it's kind, it's not envious, it is not self-serving, and it's a bunch of other things too that are not selfish. So the first command here uh, goes against sort of what we're supposed to, uh, supposed to do. Um, be kindly affection to one another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another over oneself. Oh, here's another verse that does not seem to suggest putting oneself first is appropriate. Here's one that addresses very directly the motivation that we are to have as Christians. Instead of being motivated by selfish ambition or vanity, each of you should, in humility, be moved to treat one another as more important than yourself. And so we have, oh, just piles and piles and piles of verses that focus on this. So when I say the Bible, I mean like the Bible. Um, in fact, uh, in 2 Timothy, we are warned about um, the people who love themselves, love money, brag, and are proud. They will be conceited. They will love pleasure instead of God. They will act as if they serve God, but they will not have his power. And we are even commanded to stay away from these Christian egoists. So, so there's that. But, the, but maybe I'm taking these versus a little out of context. In fact, I want to uh, present a balanced view of this. You've got all these verses, but you do also have other verses which talk about a reward in heaven. So we don't want to forget those. We want to have a balanced view here of, of these things. And we'll be asking ourselves uh, this question. We'll be saying, what then is the proper motive for, for Christians to have? Um, and so it, scripture doesn't condemn some sort of a godly reward or joy or happiness. So happiness isn't bad. I think lots of times we Christians think that happiness is bad. I don't think it is. I think happiness is good. I think the scripture is okay with this. 
Um, and it's also okay with a, a, re a reward. In fact, we seem as human beings um, have this mechanism within us. So right now I'm appealing rather than to scripture to natural law. But we seem to have this mechanism in us as human beings where we have a desire, like we desire things, and then when we, when we achieve what we desire, and it can be achieved for ourselves, it can be achieved for other people, and there can be good desires and there can be bad desires. But these desires do have this sort of, uh, this mechanism, there's a mechanism with us. When, when the desire is fulfilled, there seems to be some sort of satisfaction. Okay, and so when you add all this together, um, what is the proper motive for Christians? Is it the love of self, as John Piper seems to suggest? Or is it um, being motivated by, by love? And, and what does that mean? Um, and so, once again, I want to present this balanced view where you've got all these verses about being motivated for um, the interests of others. But then you also have these verses where it talks about this sort of reward. And these things seem to be mixed. Now I want to get to the actual critique of the Sinium Christian egoism and see if it works. Criticism number one. Ultimately, you and God switch places. The first commandment is, thou shalt have no other God before me. If you are a Christian egoist, you are essentially putting God in a position where he is used as a tool in order for you to get what benefits you. This is the exact opposite of the very conception of God. It's actually making you the God and requiring God to be in a position of service to you. Now that's not saying that God doesn't serve you, but that what, that, what I'm saying here is that you are putting God necessarily into this uh, position where you become the center of your own universe and God isn't the center. This is a direct violation of the first commandment and is incoherent logically. Um, or to put it very, very directly, the order of creation is disordered. In fact, I think you can make the argument very easily based on scripture that this is the sin of Adam that Adam puts himself in the position of God. It's not because he disobeyed God, that was part of the problem, but the, the major problem is he is tempted to put himself into the position of God. In fact, what does the serpent say to Adam and Eve? If you eat the fruit, you will become like God. This is the sin of Adam. Okay. Uh, additionally, there is a basic contradiction in motives based upon what the scripture says you should be motivated by. We've already talked a little bit about this by looking at those verses. The Christian religion constantly teaches that love for others, especially Christians above oneself, is uh, a, a primary motive. You would have to believe the opposite of this. And this motive, this contradiction of motives, is fundamentally incoherent. So we have a, a switch in the order of creation, right? Um, where you, as a created being, are putting yourself in the highest position, in God's position. Now, all of a sudden, when it comes to motives, you are to be motivated by love. Now, all of a sudden, you're being motivated not by love of others, but rather by love of oneself, primarily. So that is fundamentally incoherent. And then finally, there is a contradiction when it comes to works themselves. Right? So you take God's position... You are motivated by something that the scripture teaches you not to be motivated by. And then finally, your works actually become incoherent as well. And this is where it becomes the most obvious, right? If salvation is your primary goal, once you have achieved salvation by whatever the means are, baptism or asking Jesus in your heart or having a personal relationship with him or whatever it is, whatever those means are, once you've accomplished that, any work any good work that does not actually benefit you becomes from the egoist position wrong. So doing good works that are not beneficial to you become wrong. And so 
this is obviously backward from what, again, the scripture teaches. Acts of kindness become wrong if they don't benefit you. So the way that you should act would be like a secular egoist in every single way, except enough to earn your salvation. And this, once again, goes against fundamental teachings in, Christ in the Christian faith. And so you become the center of your universe, displacing God. Your motives would be backwards, and your actions would be backwards. So does this Christian hedonism work? Is it coherent? This Christian egoism, rather. No. No, there are multiple... that was my point in the beginning, was that it wasn't coherent. It wasn't, you're right. It's, it's Frankly, it's not a logically coherent position. To be a Christian egoist is to go against the fundamentals of the Christian faith. So it doesn't work. How many of you are disappointed? You might as well be disappointed because it'd be fun to be a Christian egoist. I get to be totally selfish and I get to have heaven too. It's a win-win. But I'm not sure that this works particularly well.